Welcome. So we're really thrilled to that all of you could join us here. Maybe I'll talk into this. For our um, discussion today, Genocide in Our Hemisphere, Justice and Reconciliation in Guatemala Beyond the Conviction of General Rios Montt. And I think this is a, it's sort of a, a, an interesting story how we, and by we I mean um, myself, I'm Daniel Rothenberg, I'm a professor at Arizona State University, and my colleagues Roddy Brett, who you'll see shortly when he comes up, and Victoria Sanford. The three of us were just in contact, like so many of you have been in recent months, over just the extraordinary nature of the trial in Guatemala. I mean, you know, we're, we're so fortunate with this. This is a ex really exceptional panel of people who've been working on the issue and are the leaders in the issue, some for, you know, well over a decade. And for those following Guatemala, and, and even for those who don't follow Guatemala or haven't for very long, this is a truly historic case. And the focus of our panel and, and our various emails and our discussions wasn't just about the case per se, but about what this particular case means and, and, and how it functions as a prism for reflecting on the La Violencia, the terrible uh, human rights violations in Guatemala. Uh, what memory means, what, what it, how, how, how uh, one can respond, how a society can respond to devastating atrocities. And, you know, as we were talking about these issues in the case, we thought, well, we should try to put together a panel. And the focus at that time was we really want to make sure that there's some attention drawn to the significance of this case as the case was going on. And then, of course, as we were planning and sending emails back and forth, um, there was a conviction. And, and as all of you know, or those who follow this case, this was an extraordinary moment. And there was, you know, celebration and sort of amazement on the side of, of those who've worked for years on this. And of course, not so long after, there was the Constitutional Court ruling. And now we're in a state of uncertainty as to where this particular case is going. But one thing is for sure, regardless of where, the partic where this case ends up, this we've witnessed over the last several months, or we could go back over the last year, or, or we could go back over the last decade, or however, whatever the timeline you, you find most effective, this has been a, 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 an, an amazing set of events, and maybe one thing that characterizes this is almost anyone here who's worked in Guatemala would not have predicted this. Um, it, 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 it isn't that long ago when the most basic acknowledgement of the severity of the human rights violations that are well documented was denied by many individuals in society. It was a significant achievement to simply provide a forum for, for, for the public affirmation of what Guatemalans suffered for so many years. And so maybe the motivating vision of this event is to try to reflect on that, try to put this into perspective. And then, of course, we have this amazing collection of people who are, have really been on the front lines of the issue and are also some of the most critical and interesting thinkers about uh, genocide in Guatemala, about data collection, about uh, legal responses to atrocities, uh, about many of these issues. And we're thrilled to have all of you here. Uh, a special thanks to, of course, the New America Foundation because they graciously offer their space and all of the logistical assistance, and particularly Andres Martinez, who's been amazing. Uh, as soon as you know, I sent an email over and called saying, how about this as an idea, they responded, of course, this is important. Uh, and also um, Kirsten Berg, who's been, as, as you know, who've, who've been part of this process, she's been at the heart of making everything work and putting this together. And so we're thrilled that you're all here. Um, so because of our schedule, I think I, I was going to speak a little bit about the question of why it is that uh, people tend not to know about the violence in Guatemala, La Violencia, as it's known um, to many, um, and, and why other uh, cases of atrocities, you know, the, the, the genocide in Cambodia, for that matter, the dirty war in Argentina, a lot of cases are widely known about and Guatemala isn't. I don't want to take too much time, but I, I want to sort of leave that as a question for everybody here. Because for those working uh, on human rights issues in Guatemala or in Latin America more generally, the case of Guatemala is, is uh, a very painful, tragic, and staggering case in the severity of violence. I won't go through those statistics because we have uh, you know, experts here to talk about that. But it is an open question, I think a question that merits some engagement, which is why is it that those like myself who teach, for example, um, when we ask our students about what they know about Guatemala, 
and what they know about uh, the Cold War era conflicts in Central America, they tend to know next to nothing, uh, often nothing. Um, and here we have a genocide in our hemisphere, which in and of itself should draw attention. The term genocide, the, the crime known as the worst crime it is possible to commit, as the UN Special Rapporteur on the subject has stated, how is it possible that violence of this level of severity remains largely unacknowledged by, by our society, by so many people? Um, so this is an opportunity to reflect on these issues, and I think you have the really great pleasure uh, of, of introducing R. Nair, who is one of the heroes of, of international human rights and it's been at the center of, of what's now a kind of well-established human rights framework. I mean, we look around us, we, we look at our students and our friends. You can, you can quite effectively and easily now be a part of a large functioning human rights community full of non-governmental organizations, full of intergovernmental organizations. There's a whole development of a network of different entities and agencies, and that wasn't always the case. And so Arne Nair is uh, an advocate with decades of experience in the field. He is the president emeritus of the Open Society Institute and really was at the forefront of a, of a, a funding and project support apparatus that, that uh, um, helped germinate so many different initiatives, including some key initiatives related to um, addressing impunity in Guatemala. He was formerly the executive director of Human Rights Watch, as you all know, uh, uh, one of the major human rights groups. And he was also the national director for the American Civil Liberties Union uh, he's been following the trial in Guatemala and recently wrote a piece for the New York Review of Books. And it's our great honor to welcome Arnaya here. So one brief logistical point is after each person speaks, there'll be a time for questions. And we have mics circulating for people in the audience to just raise their hands and identify yourself. And then we'll start with questions. 